What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today we're going to be checking out a couple of cool boas. We have uh, ball pythons, all ready to lay eggs, have some babies. You know, not not necessarily tomorrow or the next day, but you know, in the next week, two weeks, months. It's that time of year. It's not only the breeding season; it is the hatching and laying season. Hey, there's Logan. I I can, I can show you my water fountain. Logan's digging his own uh, pond. I told him we'll I'm, make I'm we'll make a real you. pond. No, you. your pond is is no. <laughs> I told him when when his little sister learns how to swim, we will build our own uh, koi pond or maybe outdoor tropical fish pond, something like that. Maybe turtle pond. Maybe maybe a little of everything, right, Logan? All right, let's go into the snake room and see what's cooking today. All right, I'm picking up some uh, crickets for the bearded dragon, some fish for the mata mata turtles. I'm looking at my friend's uh, Shane's pet store. He's got some new little guinea pig in. Look at that little cutie guy. Pretty cool. I always had a thing for guinea pigs. I don't know. I like them. He's got some ferrets, these little guys. Oh, you try to bite me. <laughs> he's eating. Never stick your hands in the, in, in the face of a ferret when he's eating. Yeah, what's up, big boy? You want to come say hi? Yeah, I know. You weren't trying to hurt me. You're just eating your food. And we got some rabbits. Let's go look at the rabbits. Some cute little bunny rabbits here. one of these guys. Look at that little cutie. Ah, uh, that's a cutie. I don't know if he wants me to help him. Got like a reddish eye too. Look at that. Pretty cool. Is he positive? Maybe? Is he positive? <laughs> Cute little bunny rabbits here. Patriotic pets. All right. We want to show you a, uh, a classic female that's about ready to lay eggs. She's an albino orange dream lesser that I produced. Almost sold this girl back in 19. We wound up keeping her. She didn't sell. And then I was like, you know what? This is a really, really nice albino. Matter of fact, we, we actually almost thought it was, Pablo thought it was a rainbow. That's because it kind of has that butter rainbow look to it. But beautiful, beautiful albino. We bred a, uh, what did we bring to this? The leopard, blackhead, blackhead candy. Candy. Oh, that's right. We, that's, this is going to be a good one. So leopard blackhead candy. Putting dark morphs into albino always gives it more contrast. And candy, as we know, uh, is allelic to albino. So we're going to get all candinos, essentially. So yeah. everything's going to be candino visual, which is great. And we'll have some leopard. We'll have some blackhead. We'll have some lesser. We'll have orange dream in there. We're gonna make some really, really nice candinos. And so, super excited. But you see how the spine is kind of like jutting up here? That's typical right before they lay. If, if, if you see that, and they, she was coiled up in a perfect coil before we kind of disrupted her. It looks like I wanted to clean the, uh, the paper towels, but she's uncomfortable too. That's why she's asked up, because she knows. She, she'll probably lay tonight even, even. It's a good possibility that we see uh, eggs in the morning, or even maybe before the morning. If I come back at night and check her out. But I'll probably let her go all night. I think she'll probably in the morning be sitting on a clutch, which would be awesome. And uh, that's what we love to see. We're during the middle midst of Britty season. And this is a really, really nice albino candino uh, combination. All right, a little update on the Tapatias mucosus oriental rat snake. I just had them out. Look at them. They think they're, they think they're cobras, these guys. They are just so, so cool. I love their big eyes. Look at those big eyes. What a, this is an albino too, and I've shown you him before. This is actually a female. Let's see the, let's see her brother. Here's the brother right there. Female's a little bigger, probably because, I'm sure probably Pablo feeds the female more. I have two, actually have two males and a female. I would have preferred, you know, two, uh, two females and a male, but I took what, took what he had. Because I love these snakes so much. I don't even care if I breed them or not. I just like them. I want to set them up in a nice display cage once uh, once they're a little bigger. 
Right now, they'll get lost in the display cage. All right, a little update on this, not little girl, but big girl. She is a double head sterling blood boa. Sterling being the patternless recessive trait, blood being the recessive trait that brings out reds. Uh, trying to produce a solid red snake here. She's been growing this girl up since 18. There's her, uh, her boyfriend right there, which is a good sign. They're not laying together. She's laying on the hot spot. She just started doing this. And they were together until just recently. I've, I've had these guys cohabit for probably for the last better part of a year straight. Because I just I thought they were going to breed last year and she never went. So I just kept them together and been feeding them. And I don't know. She she might be gravid. She's very big. She's huge. I don't know. But I don't know. I'm not sure. You know. We're going to keep an eye on her over the next uh, couple months. And hopefully we'll, we'll get some babies from her. Let's see. I'll know soon enough when she, if, she, if I see her always on the heat, pretty much, and I see, and she stops kind of eating, then we'll that'll come firm what I'm suspecting right now. I don't think she ate last week, which is weird because she's a monster eater. So, pretty cool. She's got a really really nice red tail. The head sterlings really ha and the head bloods do not look normal. They're not like they don't look like normal boas. They have a lot of visual cues. Head blood kind of skews the saddles. Um, head sterling has a lot of reds. Um, also, I notice in it. And so we'll see. And there's no hypogene in here whatsoever. So pretty cool. She wants to get away from me. She's like, leave me alone. I'm tired. I'll leave her alone. All right. Here's my uh, super fires in my uh, naturalist enclosure, which I took, I took the big plant out of here because we're trying to build a shelf for these guys so they can bask under the radiant heat panel here a little bit. But... This one loves to be up on the shelf here. We fed him this week, and my other one has been hiding under the uh, under the reptile chip for some reason. But Pablo fed her, and she ate, pulled it under the reptile chip, ate it, and stays been staying down there. I don't know why they said it was laying together for their whole life, and now they're separated. So maybe they need some time apart. One had regurged two weeks in a row. We gave him a week off, and then we started feeding him smaller prey, and, and they've been fine. So no one's regurged two weeks in a row now. I'm going to leave them alone so they can digest. If you give your, your Even if your boas can take a bigger prey item, sometimes it's just too big, and they don't like the way it feels in their stomach, and they will regurge. So, you know, try to give smaller prey items if you ever notice that happening, because if they start regurging too many times in a row, sometimes that'll be it, and they, they can't recover from that, so... Beautiful snake here. I want to keep it nice and healthy. And I can't wait till we build our shelf for this cage here. All right, a little uh, quick update. We're cleaning here cages. And so this is an IMG Sharp Albino Aztec. It's head annery. And beautiful little boy we got here. Love him. Love him, love him, love him. It's interesting, even in as they get older, you can see the, the IMG boas have much more defined pattern, and even in the albino. This will never turn black, obviously, because there's no melanin. So, But you will see some of the reds getting a little darker as the snake gets older. And you can tell by the eye. Let's show this. Let me show that eye. That solid red striped eye, that's the IMG eye. Really nice. Breeding this little, this little female here. We'll see if we get anything. All right. My blackest boa in my collection. IMG Roswell Ladder Tail, which you can't even tell now because it's totally black. Motley. We know IMG Motleys make black snakes. 100% head Kyle Albino. Blood. So 100% head Red Dragon, essentially. 100% het red dragon, essentially. Look at that black boa. What a beautiful face that is. Is that incredible? Look at the luminescence coming off that. Uh, the reflection, because she's so black. Love, love, love her. All right, here's my red dragon, female. Putting on nice size. I've had her since she is a puppy. <laughs> a little puppy dog. 
and she's actually ready to go into a bigger cage, probably a four footer, maybe even breed her possibly next year. She's, uh, she might need another year and a half, two years, but we'll see. She's put on some good size now. And like I said, I'm no, no rush, but eventually we will get her. She is beautiful. I love red dragons. That's blood albinos, double recessive. One of the best combinations of boa breeding. All right, trying to breed the blue tongues. Got my albino blue tongue here. Got my northern female there. They don't seem to be uh, enjoying each other's company too much, but you know how that goes. When they're ready, they're ready. When the hormones and the pheromones start flying, that's when the breeding starts. So we'll keep an eye on these guys and maybe we'll get some breeding action here. For the first time in the history of uh, Palumbo's pythons and boas, we gotta get some blue tongue breeding going. All right, we got some Burmese python action. Dirty glass, but everyone's waiting for food because Pablo was feeding the past couple days. So I think we're going to feed her him tomorrow, though. So you got to wait one more day. Sorry, big boy. A little albino carpet action here. And she's looking for food. I originally thought this was a zebra albino, but I don't think it's just an albino. It was zebra to zebra breeding, and then my my male and my female passed. This was the only remaining remnant of that that they ever existed. This girl that was bred in 20 and uh, been growing her up ever since. Slow growing her for sure, because she's still not too big. I gotta start upping her prey a little bit. Hopefully we can get her uh, in the breeding program next year, maybe. I think she's gonna take two more years though, I really do. I hate to say it. But you know, sometimes age is more important. But next year she'll be a f four years old. So, you know, it's possible. I have a feeling she's gonna wait till five though. All right, we'll end today's video with a little update from uh, one of my favorite boas in the collection. This is my Fire Labyrinth. 100% het VPIT positive, male. I was going to breed him this year, and then the female kind of got a respiratory tract infection, and I just yeah, I didn't want to risk him. He's such a valuable, great uh, potential future breeder. He was a little on the small side anyway. Now he definitely looks big enough, and he's old enough for sure. But that labby and fire work so well together, and then with the head VPI, there's so much potential in this boy. He's nasty, though. He's all the, I found a lot of VPI stuff has got a little bit of a nasty, cantankerous attitude for sure. And, but they are beautiful, that's for sure. It almost looks visual because the the fire gene with the labby lightens things up tremendously. You know, it gives you the blue eye. And it almost looks like a T-positive albino. But that's just because the labby reduces pattern and, and color and so does fire. So, beautiful combination. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Logan's picking the uh, the skin off my arm from when I got him sunburnt at a soccer game two weeks ago. And it's a, it's a little chilly today. It's actually 57. I wonder if that's going to actually help the olive python breeding project a little bit and the Bredleys. Because, you know, shot. Well, it seems like weather extremes seem to be something that's really good for breeding behavior. Because I, every time it gets cold and then warms up again, I notice that they're... The snakes seem to be a little bit more interested in each other. So we'll have to see. Only time will tell. Obviously, over the next couple months, we'll see if the olive python actually, because we saw them locked at one point. We'll see if we actually get some eggs from them. Maybe the Bredleys. The Bredleys are spring breeders, so they should start breeding now, whereas the olives kind of been breeding during the winter, and then we're going to see eggs hopefully in the, in the early summer. So, you know, you don't know. You know, I have a couple more outdoor enclosures planned also for my diamond pythons, maybe this coming year. And then at some point, obviously, we're going to get the... Uh, the Bolin's outside as well, but they're not big enough yet. Log, any final words before we sign off for today? I want to show you my tent. I, uh, I, I mean my water fountain. Yeah, what kind of water fountain did you make? Uh, um, I don't know. What um, are you putting in the water fountain? Water. Just water. Yeah, and then... So the Jedi have a cat to drink from it back there? Uh, um, no. <laughs> no? I'm just making a water fountain. Oh. Um, so, like, um... If it rains, I'll, um, it like, um, It'll catch the water. 
if it rains, it'll catch the water, right? Yeah. Okay, that's smart. Yeah. Um, He's uh, preserving uh, rainwater. Um, yeah, they say rainwater is the healthiest water for you, right? Yeah. All right. Let's wrap it up. You know what we got to do. If they like this video, what should they do? Uh, I don't know. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like button. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.